Hiya! Welcome to LSB Feaster's Radio Air Check Channel, where we keep great radio from the past alive. And today we're featuring the Geeter, the one and only Jerry Blavitt, who spent over 60 years on the radio in Philadelphia playing rock and roll of the 50s and 60s and doing it his way. Uh, he spent time on the air in Philadelphia at great radio stations like WIBG, WFIL, WCAU-FM, WSNI, WPGR, and a ton of radio stations around southeastern Pennsylvania and southern New Jersey. And he had a special way of just connecting with his listeners, especially teens back in the 1960s on the radio and in clubs. He did it for so long and he was super popular in that region. Back in 2021, Jerry found an envelope with unopened dedications from 1962. So he decided to do a show on the radio where they opened those dedications and decided to play the songs and do those dedications along with WXPN host Ben Vaughn. At the time, Jerry was doing an oldies show on WXPN, which was a non-commercial radio station in Philadelphia. And while doing this show, Jerry had actually talked about his early days on the radio. So it's an interesting listen. Jerry Blavitt and the Lost Dedications on 88.5 WXPN, Philadelphia. I'm Ben Vaughn. You're listening to WXPN 88.5 FM in Philadelphia. The program normally scheduled at this time will not be heard so that we can bring you a one-hour radio special, The Lost Dedications. Picture this in your mind. It's 10 o'clock on a balmy spring evening in 1962. On the top floor of City Hall in Camden, New Jersey, the lights are still on. This is where radio station WCAM resides. With the skyline of Philadelphia twinkling on the other side of the river, disc jockey Jerry Blavitt, also known as the Geeter with the Heater, is spinning obscure R&B and doo-wop 45s from his own collection and reading requests and dedications sent in by his listeners, a loyal group of kids he refers to as Jan Teens. WCAM's signal doesn't carry far, only 250 watts at night. But his music-obsessed fans have figured out that the station's transmitter is located near the Jersey bank of the Delaware River. So every night, a ritual is played out. Philly teenagers drive to the Pennsylvania side of the river to sit in their cars, groove to the music, and hear the requests and dedications. It was a magic time. <laughs> My name is Ben Vaughn. According to Wikipedia, I'm a singer, songwriter, musician, record producer, TV and film composer, and syndicated radio show host. But they left one thing out. I, too, was a young teen. Though a little younger than most, I listened to Jerry Blavitt's radio show every night and thought of him as my mentor, even though we'd never met. When I grew up and entered the music business, the Geeter and I became good friends. A little over a year ago, it was time for him to move from his storefront studio on Market Street in Philly, so I put together a team of volunteers to gather up his archives and put them in safe storage until they were ready to be sent to their future home, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Library. It was quite a task, but we got it done. A few months later, a Hall of Fame curator flew in from Cleveland to go through the collection with me and ready it for shipping. While doing this, I discovered a manila envelope with the words fan mail scrawled on it. But what I found inside wasn't fan mail. What I found were requests and dedications from 1962. I couldn't believe it. I stopped everything and read them all. It was fascinating. Mostly, I was struck by how personal some of the writing was. The young teens really looked up to the Geeter. They trusted him. I found another packet at the bottom. I pulled it out, opened it up, and to my shock, found a dozen unopened requests and dedications, all from May of 1962. Wow, the lost dedications. I immediately called the Geeter and told him what I'd found, and his reaction was priceless. 
no recognition whatsoever of the possible historical importance of these documents. His first impulse was to feel bad for the young teens, whose requests were never heard. Benefonic Ben, he yelled on the phone, we need to go on the air and honor them now. Great idea, I replied, so letters in hand, I met the Geeter at his high-rise apartment in Society Hill Towers in Philly, where he currently records his show. I brought my laptop along, loaded with every song I could think of that the Geeter might have played before 1962, and sat down with him. With breathtaking views of Philadelphia and Camden City Hall in the background, he pulled out his letter opener, and the process began. And here it is, for you now. Ladies and gentlemen, the lost dedications, with the Geeter with the heater, the boss with the hot sauce. Okay, letter number one, mm -hmm. May 8th, 1962, addressed to Jerry Blab at WCAM, Camden, New Jersey. Wow. Here it is. This was never opened. Never opened, and there's going to be a re song request and a dedication in there from That's a young teen from that year. You know what's interesting about the 18th floor? Above me, when you go over the Benjamin Franklin Bridge, is that big clock. I broadcast right underneath that clock. That's why I said, by the big tick-tock on the Tower Power Clock. That's it? That was it. From wow. The, from the 18th floor. So what do we have here? Oh, wow. Dear Geeter, please play You Were Mind. We listen to you every night. This is Jill. Please play this for Joey. Play it. Thursday, May the 10th. Wow. Wow. So very specific. <laughs> wow. You were mine. And it didn't get played, but now... You're going to play it? We're going to play it right now. And here we go. Oh, wow. Fireflies were out of New York area. Was a love of true love. I'm glad I had it here in my library. Wow. That was, that was easy to find. Listen, this is modern technology that you guys do, huh? It's, it's, it's a combination of uh, old and new. Amazing. Well, I hope those young teens are happy. They finally got their request aired on the Geeter Show. My man! <laughs> and now, a song from the Geeter's 1962 playlist, Sheba by Johnny and the Hurricanes. Okay, letter number two from May of 1962, postmark Paulsboro, New Jersey. Paulsboro. They used to yeah, go yeah. to the dances in Paulsboro. We were doing a dance at the Ice House. So what do we got here? Paulsboro, New Jersey. Paulsboro. I want you to know <laughs> that you're the greatest dish jockey around, and we hope you never stop broadcasting to our young teenagers. On your shows, you play the record, I've Been Good to You by the Miracles, would you please dedicate this record on May the 7th, Monday evening, between 9 and 10 o'clock. <laughs> Very specific. Joe, Al, Janice, Tony, Carol, and Phil, and the kids from South Philadelphia. <laughs> right on. Let me see if I can find this. The Miracles. Now, let me tell you about the song. This is the original one they wanted by The Miracles, but also later on, the Supremes and the Temps also did it and it was written by Smokey an amazing song and it kicks like this listen I got it right here I just found it are you ready yep hopefully this will work here we go look what you that's it done. this is early Smokey on Tamala not Motown make me so interesting Ben because the music that I played back in the day told a story the way a teenager felt we didn't know how to express ourselves when we were kids growing up it was the music that spoke for the things that we felt and these were the records that these kids wanted me to play and they would make the dedication to that special person wow well you connected because that letter amazing yeah amazing now all those people that she wanted this song dedicated to or probably, uh, they're out there somewhere. They're out there somewhere. It was a wonderful time for kids growing up because they went to school, they did their homework, and they were listening to radio at night. 
nighttime radio was more important than daytime radio. Because once the kid was finished homework, they were listening to the radio show at night. And when they went to bed, the parent would come into the room, turn the radio off. When the kid would go to school, the parent would turn the radio on and whatever station was on, if it was playing good music, that stayed all day long. So nighttime radio was very important for ratings the following day for radio people. Wow. And this song was popular with the on-teens? Absolutely. Winter? Now, it wasn't a big hit, though, was it? No. Well, most of the songs that I played were not national hits, but big in Philadelphia, in Jersey, Wilmington, and wherever they would hear the Geeter on the Tower of Power by the big tick-tock on the Tower of Power clock. That was it. It was only a 250-watt station, but because the tower was right on the river, that signal would bounce. Well, there are stories about kids driving their cars up to this, the Philadelphia side. Right, the Benjamin the Franklin Bridge, just to listen and to the show. And it would sit there so they could pick up your show, yeah. and sit there with their girls and listen to your show. Absolutely. And wait for these dedications. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is like such a magical image. It's a great time. Oh boy, we're up here in the Geeter's <laughs> penthouse. There's a window washer out the window right now. We're on the 14th floor. Looking you never know floor. what to expect when you're in Geeter's pack. I'm telling you. Okay, letter number three mm -hmm. is um, typewritten on the envelope. So somebody got probably somebody from Catholic school. It's got to be a girl, because a guy wouldn't know how to do that. Right, I'm going to take a bet it's, it's a girl. Okay, and there are four one-cent stamps on this. Four one-cent stamps. Yeah, and it's, it's addressed to WCIM radio station, uh -huh. Camden, New Jersey. No zip code because they didn't exist yet. Amazing. Here you go. Let's, right. let's open this and see what it is. I'll let's try to find see the music. if it is from a girl. Okay. All right. Boy, these letters are old. <laughs> they are. It's My amazing. own. It's amazing we have them. So when you were on the air, you would say, send in your requests and dedications? Oh, yeah. And you had phone lines, too, right? We had phone lines. So the phone lines were so busy at night that if they couldn't get through, they would send me a letter with their request. Well, a lot, a lot of these, the ones that I found that were already open, that you already played, said, I tried to call, but I couldn't get through, so I'm ready. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. So we're probably going to get more of the same on these. And this is typewritten. Oh my gosh. Dear Jerry, please join us in offering congratulations to John and his sweet girl Cass, who started going steady on May the 14th. They make a real cute couple, and we are happy for both of them. Please read this letter on the air any night that is convenient for you, about 9 to 9.30. Thank you. We know you'll join us in congratulations. Love, the girls from St. Joe's Dance. Ah, St. Joe's. <laughs> Catholic school. Camden, New Jersey. When I used to do the dances. Isn't that amazing? Wow. And what song? Uh, does it say what song? The, the song, I Can't Say Goodbye, which incidentally was the second song by the Fireflies. Okay, let me see if I can find it. First this. one was You Were Mine on the ribbon label. And what you're going to play right now was a second release. Well, I'm not ready yet, so keep talking about St. Joe's Dance. <laughs> St. Joe's Dance. Well, let Give me tell you about St. Joe's Dance. The nuns there would allow the girls to come to dance on a Saturday night and invite the guys to come to dance on a Saturday night. If any one of the girls were out of line and were not dressed properly, they would get detention when they came back <laughs> into school the next day oh, oh, or the next week. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I think I got to hear the fireflies. Yep. I can't say goodbye. And here it is. Yep. The harmony. Say goodbye. You go to a dance. You're from a different neighborhood. And you meet kids from other neighborhoods. And you would learn the way they dressed, what they liked. And the one thing everybody had in common was the music that brought all of us together. 
the Yantines. And when I was on the radio, I was no different than my audience. Because when I would play this music, I would remember the way I was when I was going to a dance. So I related to my audience. And even today, they're no longer Yan teenagers. They're Yan beyond teenagers. And we still relate together because of the music. Well, I wonder if John and Cass are still together. I hope so. And they're probably grandparents now. Yeah, great-grandparents, perhaps. Absolutely. And they're finally getting recognition. <laughs> Their request. Exactly. <laughs> Better late than never, right? <laughs> Amazing. I'm Ben Vaughn here with the Geeter. And if you'd like to see copies of the actual letters from this broadcast, go to xpn.org. There's a link right there. We'll be right back with The Lost Dedications. All right, we are back with The Lost Dedications, a bunch of letters that got sent to the Geeter in 1962 with requests and dedications that were never opened until now. And here we go. Okay, we have another Lost Dedication here. The Lost Dedications. Uh, lost Dedication on Lost Night Records. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is an unopened envelope from 1962 with a dedication and probably a song request in it. Postmark Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And here you go. See, let's that's let's interesting. Let's open this and see what's Because in there. WCAM was in Camden. We had a huge listening followership from Philadelphia because of the signal bouncing off the river. So not only in Camden or Jersey, but in Philadelphia would you get a big listening audience of young teenagers. Let's see uh, what we have here. Ben, I'm amazing. I'm amazed, I should say, how these letters are in such good shape. Yeah. They were just sitting in a box with your stuff. It says, Dear Geeter, we listen to your show every night. We think the records you play are the smoothest. Smoothest. <laughs> Especially the oldies. Was that a word back then? Smooth? Smoothest. It was like well, a... I'm smooth, brother. Those moves that you're making on the dance floor are smooth. <laughs> you're in a groove. <laughs> anyway, you're the greatest DJ on the radio. Please play Could This Be Magic? For Gail, for Eddie, of Summerton, for Carol and Joe, Marilyn and Question Mark. Question for mark? all of the kids... <laughs> Marilyn in question mark. For all of the kids at Martino's, especially for Big Danny, all the guys at Father Judge, especially Eddie, Joey Donahue, Danny Gleason, Ronnie, and Tommy Noonan. Thanks, Skeeter. The corporation. <laughs> the corporation? Is that like a group of kids? Well, yeah. They were, see, Judge, all of those kids from Father Judge or Newman would come together. So they came up with names. The corporation. The flock, the followers, the movers. Really? Oh, yeah. And I knew when they would say the flock that they were from Germantown, you see. And this is from the corporation. Please read this letter on Monday or Tuesday night between 9 and 10. Now, I got to tell you. Now, they didn't know that was going to happen 60 years later, though, did they? <laughs> <laughs> but I got to tell you about this song. Could it this be magic, right? Is yeah. that the one? Okay, I'm going to find it. Could this be magic? Here. But you know, just goes to show you, could this be magic was a hit in the 50s. Here it's 1962 that I'm playing this music, which goes back to the 50s. And for the first time, the young teenagers are hearing this. To them, it's new. Well, that was the interesting thing. I listened to your show. I started listening to it probably in 65. Mm-hmm. And I did not know they were old records. I didn't know. They were right. just great. They were great right. records. And I realized when I talked to people who didn't grow up in Philly that I was listening to, like, oldies and didn't even know it. I thought no, they were right. current. Which goes to show you that if something is good, it's timeless. Well, you weren't selling it as a nostalgia back then. You were playing these songs because you knew the kids would relate. What? And that was the only thing, right? But let me tell you also what happened, which is very interesting. The record distributors and the promotion men, I was not getting new material. So I was playing my music. But when the show became so big, the promotion men and the record companies started to give me new material. But it all began me playing this music 
because nobody was giving me new records to play. So these kids in the corporation who wrote you, could this be magic? Was just a song. They didn't care when it came out or nothing. They had Probably. no idea what year it came out. They're just relating to the storyline. Exactly. And the other side of this is a song called "Such Lovin." Ba ba da doon it such lovin', lovin', lovin'. But this was the hit. Could wow. this be magic? Ba, ba. Right here. Could this? When they harmonize, it's just amazing. They also did "Beside My Love," "Chapel of Dreams," "Don't Ask Me to Be Lonely," and automatically, when you would hear the dubs. I didn't have to say these are the dubs. You knew their harmony, and they would say the Gita's playing a song by the dubs. Wow! Now, when when this song, when you were like say in 1962, when you were playing this, the dubs were still together. Yeah. And would they come down and lip sync at your record hops? Yes, they would, because of the fact that they were not in demand. They loved to come on down and be a part of a new thing. Well, that's the thing. Only in Philadelphia and only on your show was this music being played. Right. But then I'll tell you what happened. Radio ignored me. The record companies ignored it at the beginning. But when this thing popped, WIBG would do a show called the Hall of Fame on a Sunday night and play every one of the records that you were that, playing that I was playing <laughs> oh, okay they developed their own show well that's that. proof once again that imitation is the sincerest form of radio <laughs> <laughs> okay another unopened request where's it from Philadelphia Pennsylvania uh, 1962 May 16th unopened until for the first now. time for the first it's time like right the now. the Academy Awards. <laughs> yes, sir. And Go this is another, uh, another request and dedication from your radio listeners from 1962. It described to me when, you're, when you were up in, on the 18th floor of City Hall mm -hmm. in Camden, New Jersey, and you were opening these letters then and reading right. them on the air. Well, I had daytime open up the letters. Your manager. Because I was so quick, and they would write everything down and give me the request. Because I didn't have time. This is for Joe, this is for Mary, and this is for Tommy and the gang from Kensington. A special hello. To, I, I would ad lib real quick. So you're actually being more connected to these letters now. At, than I was back then. In this moment. And you're on the 14th floor of Society Hill Towers right now doing it. Exactly. Looking over toward Camden. Looking, to one, <laughs> looking across where I would have to go into Camden, the 18th floor. Wow. It's all coming together. You here. know, <laughs> I don't think anybody today reads dedications on radio anymore. You know, the audience were together with me. They felt connected because of the music that I played. And especially when we did the dances, because I danced with them. I didn't wear a suit and tie. I mean, I get on the dance floor, even today when I do my personal appearances, I'm dancing with the Beyond Teens. Yeah. You know? so. Well, I remember seeing you on a discophonic scene, and you were the first TV dance show host I ever saw actually dance. The rest yeah. of them sat behind the podium. and, and well, you know. I've always considered myself to be a performer, not a disc jockey. I feel the music that I play. It's not like just putting a record on the turntable. It's feeling that music and knowing what it is. Look at this. This is written. I mean, you want to talk about penmanship. Please read between 10 and 11 on Friday, May the 18th. Dear Jerry, I listen to your show every night and think it's fantabulous. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fan bombastic. Fantabulous. That's <laughs> just the greatest. I would like to make a request for Carol and Bobby. Sandy and Rudy, Joan and Brian, Dot and Mike, Sean and Marianne, and Mike, Pat, and Jimmy, and for Ralph and Tommy, who are going into the Army on May the 18th, and for everyone who hangs at Callahan's in North Philly, I would like to hear Soldier Boy. Thank you, Carol and Sandy. Wow. Wow. So Ralph and Tony are going into the Army. Here goes my man. <laughs> 
He wants to hear the Geeter. <laughs> yes, we do have window washers here when I do my radio show. And he also, he also has a request and dedication. He, he wants wanted to, to hear Soldier Boy. <laughs> exactly. But Soldier Boy? Let's, let's the hear it. Okay. I, I, it hits with the line, Soldier Boy. I got it right here. And this was 1962 is when it came it, out, right? Exactly. So it was a new record. New record on Scepter label. When this was requested, it was a brand new? Brand oh. new. Wow. Okay, here we go. Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy. Oh, my little soldier boy. You are listening to The Lost Dedications. Here's a song forever connected with the Geeter, Jam Up by Tommy Rich. Okay, here's one from Levittown, Pennsylvania, written in blue ink. Blue ink. 1962. And it doesn't even, it says CAM radio. There's no W. Well, back then, there was only one WCAM. <laughs> wow. Levittown. You know Bob Horn, who originally had bandstand, lived in Levittown? And even to this day, I do these dances up in Levittown, in Trenton. Still, I mean, and these young teenagers still come to see me as beyond young teenagers. Wow. Oh, this is like parchment. Oh, look oh, at it. Oh, my. Is it is a letter in blue ink, too? Oh, my God. It's in blue. There you go. Wait. Wait. <laughs> ben. What is it? <laughs> you, you got. <laughs> Let me see that. You, got, you gotta it? read this letter. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about your reaction here. What, what do we have here? <laughs> Dear Jerry, as I sit here listening to your program, as I do every night, I felt that I should write and tell you how wonderful I think you are. <laughs> I have been a faithful listener for a long time, but I kept putting off writing to you. Today, someone told me, for a joke, that you had been killed in an auto accident. <laughs> That's some joke. <laughs> it's a well-known fact, and I'm such a loyal fan, so I guess they wanted to see how I'd take it. After that, I made up my mind to write tonight. When I heard that, I can't tell you how I felt. Exclamation point. The tears came to my eyes, and my first thought was, who will play the tough records for the young teenagers? <laughs> and I realized that no one could. No one but, quote-unquote, our leader. Thanks so much for being the greatest disc jockey around. And do me one more favor. Be careful. We need you. And if anything should happen to you, I don't know what we'd do. Once again, I really think there is nothing and no one to take your place. Keep on broadcasting, and we'll keep on listening. This is from Johanna Shear in Levittown, Pennsylvania, and the song, let me see, would you please play My Troubles Are Not at an End by the Penguins. You know, let the, me find that. The, the love that these kids gave to me, it, it was the inspiration for me to continue all of these years because these were not only fans, but these were loyal listeners who would follow me everywhere. And I never forget, Bruce J. Friedman wrote a wonderful article, Saturday Evening Post, about these kids who followed the teenage leader, the Geeter. And he talked about, because he stayed with me for five days, went to the dances, did the show, and he talked about the loyalty and the love that these kids had for me. And that was a special thing that even keeps me going today, knowing, as I said before, they're not young teenagers, but that same love they have for me, I call them beyond young teenagers, you know. And this is interesting because the song that she requested was by the Penguins. And as you know, the Penguins did Earth Angel. This song is a sad song about my troubles are not at end. Penguins or Mercury. You got to oh, listen wow. to this. Well, I'd like to say to Johanna Shear that the Geeter is very much still alive. <laughs> Thank God. He's right here, and he's working at pretty much every night yeah. and every day. <laughs> and I still can play the music that they like. The beautiful music it is, too. Yeah. The Penguins. Here listen we go. Listen to the harmony. Here we go. Oh. 
You can hear the Earth Angel sound as I walk along. Johanna Shear from Levittown, Pennsylvania. Your song finally got played by the Geeter, and uh, he's alive. Till this day, I get requests for that song. Really? Yep. Yeah. I'm Ben Vaughn here with the Geeter with the Heater, and after this break, we'll reveal what happened when we track down one of the Yontines who wrote one of these letters. This and more when we return with the Lost Dedications. And we made a promise. We promised that we would track down one of these young teens who sent in a request and dedication, and we did. We found one. Johanna Shear, who wrote the letter that you just heard. We went on the internet, and after a few hours, we discovered that she became a rock critic for the Village Voice. But that's not all. She then married John Hall of Orleans and co-wrote their biggest hits, Still the One and Dance With Me. Not to mention Half Moon by Janis Joplin. She was stunned when we contacted her and invited me to her home in Woodstock, New York. So I went, tape recorder in hand, and talked to her about her letter. And here it is, an interview with a former young teen, Johanna Hall. You it was amazing to see this letter which I, of course, had completely forgotten about, and how it brought me back to that girl who was very romantic, crazy about music, but could not have imagined that she, I, would become a songwriter and a journalist about music and live this life that I have had. And I really feel like the foundation, of course, my father, being a drama critic, I heard, I went to Broadway shows with him, I heard all of what we now call the Great American Songbook at home. But when I heard The Geeter, that's when I really connected in the this deep, deep way to the music that so moved me. So I, I never dreamed that I could be actually a music maker. I was just a music lover. And I'm very grateful for the schooling that I had from WCAM and Jerry Blavitt. Describe how you felt when I contacted you and you saw this letter for the first time? I was so surprised and I would even say astounded by it. Life is full of surprises. This is one of the biggest ones I think I've ever had. And how it put me in touch with who I was and the incredible sense of longing that I think was Maybe what made me connect with that music, that deep longing. Oh, man. You know, there was something in that segment that you sent me where he said, I didn't just play it, I felt it. Yeah. And I think that's what made him the greatest disc jockey ever. Because he felt it. By the way, I used to go to these firehouse dances in Bristol. Those were great. And the Dovells came to one of them. And my group, we had a dance we made up called The Step. And we would do it to um, like the beat like Monday to Tuesday, Tuesday to Wednesday, do, 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 every day of the week. And we were doing The Step and the Dovell said, w what is that dance? And we said, it's the step. Then they came out with the Bristol Stomp. Which is almost the same melody. It's the exact same. Right. That was... So you were part of that group? I invented the Bristol Stomp with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And the I, Gieter, you know, the Geeter talks about that. He, he always mentions when he plays the Bristol Stomp, this was originally every day of the week by the students and some kids up in Bristol. So you were one of those I kids? I was one of those kids. No way. Yeah. That's, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
kids in Bristol are sharp as a pistol when they do right. Bristol stomp. It's, it started in Bristol at a DJ at a, hop. at a record hop. Right, right. They ponied and twisted, never going to stop. So uh, a question I have is if you wanted to say something to the Geeter right now, what would it be? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You, you played the music that spoke to my heart and I felt that you understood me. And that was in the confusing emotional times of being a teenager to feel that somebody knew how you felt was so important. And that's why I wrote that letter. Because I felt he was essential. So what would I say? I guess I'd say I love you. I don't know you. <laughs> you don't really know me. But there's that connection through the music that was so important to my to my teenage years and as the foundation for the songwriter that I became. So thank you. That's great. That was beautiful. You are listening to The Lost Dedications. I'm Ben Vaughn with The Geeter. And one of the segments that he used to do on his show back in 1962 was called For Lovers Only. And it was so popular, he released an album version of that show. And here's an excerpt from that album, For Lovers Only. And as we say, each and every night on the lover's party, the coyote needs someone, that's someone, well that's the fox, and the fox, she needs someone, and that someone is the coyote, the coyote needs the fox, the fox needs the coyote, Bee need the honey, like the flower needs the rain, like the seed needs the ground, like the farmer needs the crop, like the ocean needs the salt. Huh? That's how the Amazon, that's how the fox needs the stud, that's how the fox needs the coyote. And this is oh so true with all young love, huh? Everyone, but the young or old needs someone, huh? Needs someone to hold. Needs someone to be with. Needs someone to talk with. Needs someone to walk with. Everyone needs someone to love with, huh? And teenage love. Wow Young teenage love It's timeless I had no beginning, had no end It will never end As long as there are teenagers There will be Amazons and foxes Falling in and out of love to the coyotes eh? And this is good, you see Cause when the right Amazon When the right fox When the right coyote comes along if you experience all kinds of young teenage love now, when the right one comes along, then you will be in a position to say, I love no one but you. I'm Ben Vaughn, and if you'd like to hear the letters we didn't get to and see copies of the actual letters, go to XBN. Org. There's a link right there. And also, if you'd like to hear the music without us talking over it, that's available as well. And now, back to the Lost Dedications. Okay, we have a letter here from Runnymede, New Jersey. That mm -hmm. um, How many years? 1962? Well, I'm not going to do that. Imagine it's still around. <laughs> yeah, that's, it is amazing. And let me see what this is. Oh, boy, this is good. It looks like it, it includes a second page with a poem written by the girl who wrote this. So let's see. Dear Geeter, I listen to your great show every night, and I really think you're tough. T-U-F-F. <laughs> <T> <laughs> uh, 
There is no one better. Please tell Rod Johnson to be good to Barbara because she really likes that guy a lot, and I don't think he realizes it. Well, you see, when I did for Lovers Only, I would talk about Rob or Jen or Jim or Sally in between the song, you see. So I can understand what she's saying. And you would give advice or... Yes, yeah. Wow. She goes on to say, I am going with a great kid right now. He's really wonderful, and I like him very much, so would you play to make a long story short? Oh, uh, you know the lyric of that? To make a long story short, I love you. There you go. (laughs) Cuts right to it, doesn't it? And let me see, for Joe Antonini and Pat McCaffrey, Uh, between 10 o'clock and 10.30 on Monday night. Lots of luck, and thanks, Geeter, a dedicated friend, Pat. P.S. I've enclosed a short prayer I think every broken-hearted teenager should know. Please read it. And here it is. I, I don't know if I can get the whole thing done here, but it's called Prayer for a Broken Heart. Dear God, please tell me how you start mending a teenager's broken heart. The pieces are shattered and always, I pray. Please send him back again my way. One more chance is all I ask. Oh, dear Lord. God, is this such a task? To find him for me and bring him back home. I am weary, dear God, and so all alone. This is pretty good. Wow, how old is I, I wonder. I'm guessing high school, right? High wow. school. I realize how wrong I have been to doubt his words and argue with him. But if you are listening, please answer this prayer because you know how much I really care. Until his return, this will just be a part of a teenager's lonely and weary broken heart. This is inspired by your radio show, this thing here. Well... For lovers only. Because I would give advice in between the song. I would play the instrumental version of By Love Possessed, Clever Enough Strings. And my delivery would be from what I heard on the one lyric to tell the story, how you could be lonely while all the guys are out on a date, and you would look up into the sky, and you would hear, Is there someone that I want? Let it please be you. And then I would talk again about that. So they related that letter is amazing because that teenager very sensitive and listen to the words that I would say and understand what the music and the lyric was saying and was able to write that yeah Pat McCaffrey is her name Wow. and uh, the song that she wants to hear to make a long story short and I have that here wow. somewhere it opens up with such a beautiful... Ah, I found it. You here got it, is. it? Yeah, I got it. And here it is. Eddie and the Starlighters. Now, pretty lady, if you don't know how to say what you feel, perhaps this song would explain. Tell them. Make a of joy. I'm glad we reconnected with the lost letters. Love letters straight from your heart. (laughs) Tells it all. Beautiful. Even though we're near or apart. Well, I'm really glad that we were able to do this. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. On behalf of all those people. Yes. (laughs) 